Hello and welcome back to this channel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this lettering where it creates an illusion that the lettering is bent or it's a little folded or rising above the surface of the paper. So let's just get started. As usual, I have a color palette for you guys. So go ahead and check the link below to download it. I have created this in two color palettes. One is this one and the other is this one. So feel free to download anything you want. So let's click on create new and let's go to digital and click on square. For this, we'll be using the grid option in Adobe Fresco. It's a new feature. So if you don't see this icon right here, go ahead and update your Fresco and then you should be able to see this. Once you have this, click on this and make sure you turn on the grids. So now the spacing is the spacing between each grid thingy. So you can either do this or you can click and then you can give any number. I'm going to set it at 68. And the opacity is really the opacity of the grid so you can keep it as low or as high as you want i'm just going to keep it a little darker so that you guys can see it on the screen okay once you have that you can click back and it goes away the word that we're going to letter today is very simple that is hello okay so let's start by bringing in the color palette once you have downloaded the color palette onto your ipad or any device that you're using you can click on this photos or images and go to your photos and bring it in click on done Okay, so you have your colors here and since we have the grid on, it doesn't look so great. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the grid so that I can see it better. Now I'll just click and hold to select that color. Once you do that, you see that it pops up here. By the way, you should be on a brush. It doesn't matter which brush, just any brush, but not one of these settings. Okay, and then I'll pick that color up and I'm just going to draw on my artboard and I'm going to do that for the other colors as well. The reason I do this is because if you click on a color palette here, if you go into recent, you'll see all these colors right there. Okay. And once you're done, you can just click on this eye to hide the color palette and the brush strokes that you just did. Okay. So let's go to this blank layer. If you don't have one, click on this plus to create a new blank layer. And we'll be using vector brushes to create our lettering. When I say vector brushes, I almost always refer to the basic round. And the size, I think I'm going to keep it at 16.5. Let me just check. Yeah, that is a bit high, maybe nine. Okay, I think 9.5 should be okay. You can use this to increase or decrease like this, or you can click and hold and you'll get this nice little keypad kind of a thing where you can type in. So I'm just going to put it as 10. And my smoothing is set to 70. It doesn't really matter, but 70 is okay. It's in an okay range. Okay, so to begin, let's go ahead and click on our graph. I mean, we did that already before, so you know what setting needs to be used. And then I'm going to uncheck that and okay. Okay, now it's time to start lettering. So the reason I have this grid here is because it's easy to figure out or make sure that create consistent lettering. I have chosen black so that it's easier to see. So first of all, I'm going to go to the side of the artboard and mark seven boxes like this two three four five six and seven you can mark it like this as well just so you know seven boxes okay and then one two three on the third box i'm going to put an arrow and mark it like this you might be wondering why are we doing this because this makes it easier to explain to you like how i create this artwork okay so if you want to write the word hello and you start off with letter h so the first thing you're going to do is make a H probably like this like this and then maybe you know draw a line like this or something like that right this is going to be a H and then you're going to fill it up like oops that's not closed I guess so it's like that okay let me just close that off okay there's your H but in this artwork what you're going to do is I'm going to choose some other color now maybe this pinkish okay so in here what you're going to do is you're going to start off from here and as soon as you reach this arrow here you're going to try and slowly bend it and instead go and reach this point here and you're going to do the same thing here go ahead and go ahead and slowly bend it and reach this point here and then join this okay so instead of drawing a straight H we're going to draw a curved H that's what I mean. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So I'm just going to erase off this part here. So let me just make it bigger. Okay, we're just going to keep the guide. Okay, that we can erase it off later if you want to. Let me go to the vector brush. 
and I will choose black because then you can see it pretty nicely. So I'll start off with this corner and I'm going to go ahead and when I see, okay, this should be slow. When I see the third mark, now I'm going to slowly start bending the line and I'll go reach here, okay. So now that you're done, I'm going to go ahead and go into my selection tool here and make sure you're in this lasso tool and nothing else. I'll click and select this thing. Now I click on the layer and say duplicate selection. So what this does is it pastes one more of that. So I'm just going to quickly drag it and bring it so that it sits right next to it and the distance is exactly one grid point. Okay and once I'm done I'll go back to my vector brush here and I'm going to join this end and join this end. Now I'll click and click on merge down. So now it's like one whole object. So click on your fill tool and color it. So now you can go ahead and delete this off. What you can do is you're still on your brush. So just double click on this touch thingy over here. And now it becomes an eraser, but it's an eraser, which is a vector brush. So it's exactly the same brush, but as an eraser. And you can go ahead and trim this a little bit. You just have to do this one time. All right, my, this thing is ready. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the selection tool again, select this and oh, close lasso. So I'm going to close it or oh, close lasso and then click duplicate selection. And now it's one more. And then you can just bring in around here so that it's exactly two blocks away from this one. Okay. And once you're done, you can click on done. Okay. So now it's actually a part of hedge that looks good. And now you want to go ahead and make your edge. But before that, make sure you make a copy of this click and click on duplicate layer. Now let's go ahead and merge this down so that you can make an edge. The reason I made a copy is you're going to use this for other alphabets, right? So you need a copy of that. Let's go to this edge layer, go to your vector brush. And we're going to go ahead and add a line like this. You can make it a bit thicker if you want. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to go into this one and duplicate this. And I'll go back here or you can use any, any one that doesn't matter. Click on your transform tool because it's still hiding here. And we're going to go ahead and bring it. So it's again like one, two steps away from the hedge. Okay, click on done. And now this is going to be E. Go to your vector brush and we'll go ahead and do this. And this should be around the same line, okay? Make it thicker if you want, by the way. Okay. E is ready. And now go here. Again, duplicate. We don't want to use that. So go back here. Now it's time for L, but click on your transform tool. And you drag that back over here. Click on done and now I'm going to go ahead and make L. Now I'm going to duplicate this itself because it's LL, right? So duplicate that and then transform tool and place it again, something like this. Click on done and we have this now. So duplicate this, click on transform, bring it all the way up here on done and this one as well you have to bring all the way up here because there's going to be your O on done and use merge these two click and merge down and now use your vector brush and join these two and since it's O we're going to go ahead and round this up a little bit like that okay I think that looks good and now we can delete this off. So go back here, use your eraser and you can delete this off. All right, that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and merge all these layers now. So click and you can do merge down and we want to move that LO a little bit left. So I'm going to go ahead and click on transform tool and move it a little bit on the left like that. Click on done. It's good. And then merge it down. And if you want, you want to move this here again, let's click on that and move this a little bit like that and click on done. And I think it's okay now. Everything looks good. So we let's go ahead and merge it down and merge down. Okay. 
Hmm, that looks good. And now I'm going to click on a new layer and bring it all the way below this layer. And now we are still on black. So I'll go to my pixel brushes, go to basic and then go to soft round opacity. And in here I'm going to keep my brush at about 68. Flow is at 17 and smoothing is at 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of shadow. My shadow is going to be just here like this. That's it. So what I'm doing right here is, let me take a vector brush by the way. I'm just going to add a shadow here like that. You see straight lines, wherever the alphabet was supposed to be, I'm going to add a shadow there. So let me go ahead and add here as well. Okay, and I think it looks fine. Now I can go ahead and disable the grid. So you can see what's happening, you know. So can you see that slight shadow over there? Okay, so let's go ahead and group these two now. Click on these three dots here and click on select multiple. Click on the font as well and let's make it into a group. You can click on the folder icon to group it together. So now click and duplicate. Layer group. And now we're going to go ahead and use the transform tool and move it a bit up so that it's right above that. Click on done. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again. Now click on transform tool and move it a bit down. So done, click on done. And now let's go ahead and change colors. So go to this. So double click to go inside the layer group and click on the font that you have. And let's go ahead and choose our first color. That is this lighter one, which is um, 161, 9 and 84. And you can go to your fill tool. And since it's vector, you just have to click, 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 click and it's done. Let's go back, double click on this and this one would be pink. Okay, let's go back and go into this one and this one would be obviously this one. Now it's time to give a background. So go back here, go to this image layer, click on a new layer and let's go into the color that we have for background. Go ahead and click and click on vector and your background is ready as well. But it doesn't look like it's turning out of paper, right? So if you feel like um, this is not looking so great, I just want it to be turned around. So you can go back to the layer which has the font, by the, which has the lettering, by the way, and click again and click on select multiple. Yes, you can group the groups as well. So click, click, and then group. And don't worry, if you go inside, you see that the groups are there. So it does not get, you know, smushed together anything. It's still there. So once you have that, click on the transform tool and you can just slowly turn it in around like that how much ever you want actually and click on done you can also make it smaller if you want if you feel like it's taking up a lot of space and click on done and there you go your artwork is ready and this is how you create this kind of lettering it's super simple isn't it so grid is super helpful in this case because without the grid you wouldn't be able to achieve this uniformity in this lettering. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. I usually post a new fresco video every Tuesday, so don't forget to come back and check next Tuesday. If you want to support me, you can always buy me a coffee at ko-fi.com. The link to do that is in the description box below. You can also support this channel by sharing this with your friends, family or anybody who is interested in Fresco or you think would be interested in Fresco. That would really help my channel grow a bit more. If you do create something using one of my tutorials, don't forget to tag me and bring me some color or think beyond color. I would love to check it out. Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.